Uh, this is uh, Guy, and um, as you can see, I love trying out new technology, and I just thought that I would uh, talk those people who are interested through this email. Um, I put them together every few months, and I'm always excited and interesting to see uh, who comes back. So um, I always feel it's important to make sure that people know that they're on it because they want to be on it. Um, but I think that there's a, uh, it's fascinating to be in touch with people in this way, I guess. And I've given some contents and summarized some of the things that are in my life or that have crossed my desk that I think that I can share and are worth sharing to a broader audience through an email like this. And so uh, I always start off with the white papers uh, the first white paper that came to me was from Brian Lawrence, friend uh, from business school who attends ValueX. And, um, uh, you know, it's this kind of way of downloading a piece of your brain and creating the opportunity for people to give feedback. And so perhaps many of you have read them. So uh, the one that I'm most, well, I'm excited about all of them about, but um, Lee Hackett is a... Uh, engineer, uh, spent a long time working in the power industry uh, for places like uh, Alstom Power, and uh, he is now a consultant and met him in my office and we got talking about uh, ratings agencies. But uh, I think there really is a need in the world for well done environmental ratings. And so um, we produced a uh, uh, just an introduction, really. So you got that introduction there if you're interested. And uh, we're really curious to get feedback. So uh, there's more to come there on these environmental ratings. Uh, he and his partner, Sarab, have done some great work. And I'm, this was just an introduction. So uh, that's uh, one thing. And then um, I actually had uh, Alex Liebkucher in my office before. And uh, he's got some extraordinary connections in the automobile industry. It's just where he grew up, and I guess he talks about it here. And so he just, dinner table conversations are interesting. And I really enjoyed working on this white paper with him. And um, I'm proud I, I uh, saw that uh, the CEO of a top five auto company, uh, the uh, leading management, should I say, of a top five auto company, has read it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you already provided feedback to Alex. It would be great, you know, Alex. I'm I'm delighted for Alex to get feedback. I hope people read it. Uh, so um, had a couple of high school students in my office over the summer. These are two of the most energetic and uh, hardworking high school students that perhaps I've ever met. I mean, neither. Alexandra or Pierre are over the age of 18, I believe, and they produced these two white papers, um, uh, one on uh, the Beijing market or aspects of the Beijing market in uh, China and around the world, and um, another on the Indian consumer good market. You know, I always make sure that there's an email there so that people who read it can get back directly, and it's kind of fun to as a way of interacting with somebody so uh, happy with really happy with all of these white papers and then lastly also Satvik who did an internship with me uh, he did uh, he wrote something up on the secondary impact of um, what's happened there uh, electric vehicles and I'm excited uh, for uh, reaction to it you can see it's uh, quite in depth so um, second item in the, this email newsletter, uh, uh, I think that um, I was actually running a spreadsheet that I almost thought I'd share with you, but uh, there are various different explanations of this simple idea that um, averages are not all the same. And the key distinction is between a time average and an ensemble average various different explanations. What I would really prefer would be able to just understand all of the lecture notes. Uh, the guy who's behind this is a guy called Ole Peters. I've just put up his uh, Twitter account there, uh, worth following. But um, these lecture notes are something to behold. 
takes you through uh, the mathematics of probability and helps to under explain why what uh, why in an ensemble average wealth might go up, but in a time average wealth might go down. And we tend to think of ensemble averages, even though uh, that really describes a state of parallel universes that if you're thinking of investing your own money, you're never going to be able to live in a parallel universe. And so it's just really, really important stuff. And it's kind of, I know it's profound and I don't even fully understand it, but I've included various links here um, to his lecture notes. Uh, but then I kind of increasingly, Nassim Taleb has a really good write-up, uh, all the TED talk were at Gresham College. And I originally found this through a tweet by Sanjay Bakshi and uh, they have their Sanjay Bakshi and another guy called Raj have uh, perhaps one of the most simple explanations here, which I've included. Um, uh, then uh, I got a short uh, thought that arose for me when I came out of my partnership meetings. And there's a link to my um, uh, annual report uh, that um, or a way to get the annual report and these uh, investing principles I really ought to publish on my website at some point uh, because they really are just like perhaps the most important thing, uh, most important lessons I've distilled from my life. And um, uh, what I guess what was really surprising to me as I kind of looked at all these funds that had gone out of business was the reasons why they'd gone out of business and I don't always know, but uh, and there were some funds that are no longer in existence because the owner made so much money that they just wanted to do something else with their life. But um, so many funds that stopped being funds because the person running it, not because they were stupid, but because they just did kind of didn't follow some basic rules. And, uh, you know, this idea of inversion by Jacobi, all I want to know is where I'm going to die so I don't go there. It's just super applicable. And I just realize, you know, it's not about this path is not about being brilliant as much as it is avoiding the major pitfalls. Um, then, you know, sometimes I write book reviews. I didn't write book reviews. Uh, these are not all the books that I've read, but the ones that I remember that I read. And I thought I would enjoy sharing with you some of the books that I looked at but didn't finish and making that distinction for you. Um, I wish I had the time to review all of these books. Uh, um, Heroic Failure is really biting about Brexit. Uh, Fintan O'Toole is a fascinating guy. And um, something interesting, I mean, I actually met Mark Bitts in person and I had to go and find out on my own that he had a book out. And uh, some short piece of recommendation, if you meet somebody Try to find, if they have a book out, go read the book. It's a much better way to get to know them, much faster way to get to know them in all their depth. Uh, and then speak to them in person. But it's a, one does a great honor to somebody if one's read their book or books before one speaks to them because you just save time. And uh, the ones that I didn't finish or just uh, dip through, uh, Fearless symmetry, symmetry is just I have a constant desire uh, to um, master the mathematics of group theory. I don't know that I'll ever get there, but I tried again with uh, fearless symmetry and the math was too hard for me. And um, but different reasons why, I mean, uh, some, some have great ideas, but are not as well written maybe as others. And some just, I uh, you know, really enjoyed Tim Marshall's book. Uh, but I skipped some parts because there were other books that I was reading at the time. And actually, uh, Lyndon Johnson's Path to Power is just amazing insights into somebody, anyone who's got an interest in power. And actually, I'm, I'm doing it mostly via Audible when I'm out on my bicycle. So uh, um, a few things coming up. Uh, Camilla Cavendish has been in the press a lot in the UK. She writes for the FT. She's an extraordinarily good writer, a thoughtful lady. And she was a classmate of mine, and she's agreed to do a kind of um, a briefing conference call. And I think that uh, to the extent that I can accommodate people, it's primarily for my investors. 
Uh, if you go on the link, you'll get to this registration. And then once we see registrations come in, provided the numbers don't get too great, we'll, we'll add people as they register. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I've been thinking about the future of intelligent investing and uh, I'm going to be hosting a panel on it. It's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. Uh, I've got some interesting people attending and to the extent that I can, I might try and produce yet another white paper on the topic. Uh, and um, uh, Heresis is a great organization uh, run by a guy called Frank Richter and he puts together these meetings and so he's allowed me to have a panel on the future of, uh, well, um, not the future, um, finding the next hundred bagger. And it's going to be fun and interesting to see what comes out of that. And um, uh, that's going to be in cash case. And I can't do the inviting there, but uh, um, uh, somebody who's qualified to attend the event, if you want to attend, I can certainly do my best to introduce and uh, then I just included a couple of links of interviews that I've done. Um, the Devi Nakana one is uh, um, aimed at an Indian audience. Uh, Bloomberg Quint is for um, Indian observers of financial markets. This one was in Spanish, which um, has my horrible English accent. I think that Tulman Barish does really high quality videos and I was um, really happy with how that turned out. So I end the email with that. Uh, I hope that, well, um, it's a fun way to keep in touch. And obviously, if, if it's not fun for you, there's always the ability to unsubscribe. Uh, and uh, there's also a few social media. I do, I know some people think that social media for the birds, I, some people have closed their Facebook accounts. Uh, I read the McNamee book. Um, I'm not pleased with the way Facebook is responding to uh, questions about how they may have changed the political process, but I feel obliged to participate in those media. And I actually really enjoy uh, many of the conversations that end up taking place with me across the social media. So there's links there. And uh, thanks. Hope you're having a good, good autumn.